Yo, welcome back. This is Newsfile. It's your most authoritative news analysis platform. And here on Newsfile, as we know, we put Ghana first. I will go straight to Kumasi to speak to Erastus Asaridonko and then return to the studio. Uh, first to Zoom to speak to Clara and to the studio to uh, Dr. Ayene and uh, Dr. Okoboy. Erastos Asaridonko, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Erastos, unmute. Thank you very much for having me, sir. Great. So tell us how you came to go to the Manso Forest to capture this situation uh, where we saw what you guys uh, rev uh, uncovered. You went into this particular area and saw the people that were arrested, the Chinese nationals dominantly, predominantly, and then you saw military uniforms in the, in the place. And then before we could say Jack, one officer came, had an interaction, was very angry, made a phone call, and a dozen other military officers came, and we are told they overpowered even the government's specialized team that was going around to do this work. How did you get to go there? Hello, Erastos. Okay, so uh, we're having a bit of a difficulty with uh, Erastus's line. We would rather bring him on, on the phone so that we may be able to uh, go on. So this was a, a story that was published um, earlier on the 18th that said that despite the withdrawal of all military personnel from mining sites across the country, Love News has evidence of over 30 fully armed military men protecting miners degrading the forest of Manso in the Ashanti region during the team's journey to this part of Manso and its forest uh, scenes, scenes of destruction and de degradation were visible from miles away. Abandoned pits and mining settlements dotted the road leading into what is left of the once lush forest. All right, Erastos, so tell us how you got to go there. Hello, Erastos. Rassos? Yeah. Okay. Let's hear you. All right. So I was approached uh, by the environment uh, minister uh, to follow this task force, uh, which is uh, uh, a Ministry of Environment, Science and Innovation, EPE, stroke EPE uh, task force, I was told. And so uh, I followed them. We started three weeks ago. In fact, we had been to uh, so many areas before we went finally to this particular uh, forest. Uh, we went to Odumto. Odumto is uh, in the Amansia Central District, deep within the uh, forest enclave, uh, where we also saw uh, similar destruction in, in that uh, bush. Um, we went to Kobro, where we have been three years ago, and we saw a further degradation of the environment by the same company we flashed out um, three years ago, and uh, the, the same Chinese people who are still working there. And so uh, there we saw some military as well. And the same commander we met this time around was the same commander with some military people in that push. That was uh, three weeks ago. There, the Chinese we arrested some calls came in and were asked to leave the place. The Chinese were released by the same military commander we met at this particular uh, site. So we had to leave them there to uh, do their job. We came back uh, and went to this place, uh, Tabosre in the western region. There too, uh, we saw this degradation. So just uh, this Saturday, uh, this past Saturday, the team decided to go to 
this area because we then we have received calls from people in the area, community leaders, that they were destroying the forest and they want them uh, flushed out, but uh, we, should, we should come over there. So we woke up like 3 a.m. and we set off. It was a very long journey, about 70 kilometers deep within the uh, forest and cave. When we got to the middle of the forest, we saw this settlement made with wood. And initially, we saw Ghanaian, uh, you know, Ghanaians there, a few of them, about uh, 12 of them. But as soon as they saw us, they ran into the bush. Then we saw some Chinese as well. Some of them ran into the bush. Uh, we, we managed to arrest about seven of them. Then the leader of the team, uh, who is a, uh, a police officer, started conducting a search. So with our camera team, we were following the search team room by room. So we were conducting the search room by room and filming everything. So in three of the rooms, we saw that there were military uniforms with name tags. In some of the rooms, we saw rifles, uh, military rifles in, in the room. And so we quickly sensed that there could be military presence uh, in the room. As you saw me in the video, those of you who have watched it, um, narrating. Then about 30 minutes into our search, there was this young military officer who uh, drove a private Tundra vehicle into the uh, uh, enclave. Then he inquired as to why we were there. And after the uh, person in charge had briefed him, he started making some calls uh, to some superiors. He mentioned their name in the we, part of it we recorded in our report. Mm. And so, and, and the person with, and the person in charge you are referring to is a police officer. Yes, it's a police officer. All right. So he started making those calls and telling them that um, we are here in the hot duties and some media men and policemen have come here. So uh, he wanted the person to react. Then within about 30 minutes, the whole place was crawling with military men. In fact, I could count about 30 of them armed with bulletproof vests and everything you can think of, fully armed. They came in white pickups. Some of them came in Tundra vehicles. Some of them came by other vehicles. And they came with these heavily built men. Some I know to be part of the Delta Force team that went to the court and all that. Mm. So when they came in, they were very furious, very angry that uh, even when the in charge interviewed, uh, introduced the team that were from the Ministry of Environment and that was being sent to uh, look at what is happening in there, they wouldn't bite. They still said that the person who is mining there has legal uh, uh, right to mine, and so they will not allow us to arrest the Chinese people. They released them. And then they took their things, the things, the uh, uniforms that we put in the vehicle, they took them back. Everything we seized from that end, they saw that we returned all of them. In fact, I would say that they told our team to stand down and then surrounded the whole enclave and said nobody was leaving the place until they finished and they were satisfied that they are done with us before we could leave. So it turned into verbal exchanges, heated verbal exchanges. Some of them threw punches, especially the heavily built men, threw punches with some members of the task, uh, task force. Then they came to us and said they needed us to surrender the camera. And I said no. At this point, one of the heavily built men came in, wrestled with my camera technician. The camera fell down and part of it broke. Then they took the camera. Then I asked my driver to park well because there was a vehicle which was approaching. Quickly, one of the heavily built men rushed into the front of the vehicle, punched the driver, started kicking me in the chest, and took the key from the ignition. So, in fact, at this point, I was protesting that they, they cannot assault him like that, all under the watch of the military. Then they came in, smashed the, the, the same guy, smashed the windscreen of the vehicle. Then I told my people to stay in the vehicle and nobody should move. And they broke the side mirrors. That was when we had 
we were done with them and they allowed us to leave, then one of the heavily built men came in with a pump action gun and used the bat to hit the mirror. What he said was, kind of money to help you watch it. Like, don't ever come here again. Then he smashed the side mirror. Okay. Then the military came in, asked us to uh, delete the, the, the footage on the camera. In fact, I protested. The owner of the site was there. I protested, but he said they should delete it. So they took it, deleted everything from the camera. They took our personal phones, deleted everything from our personal mm -hmm. phones as well. So they said they were not satisfied. They still think that we were hiding something uh, in the vehicle. So they wanted to strip us and search, uh, uh, conduct a body search and search the vehicle as well. So it was at this point that the uh, policeman in charge got angry and said that, well, I will not allow you to do that to them. So if you want to do that to them, they should get on board the vehicle. If you want to kill us, kill us. So we got on board the vehicle. They had blocked the entrance to the forest. So they had to remove their vehicles and the wood they've used to block the entrance before we could make it out. Mm. Uh, do we have any updates on these developments apart from the statement issued by the military command here in Accra uh, saying that there is going to be an investigation? Well, we've been, uh, I was contacted by three military officers. Uh, they identified themselves as coming from the military intelligence. Uh, they came to my office, uh, we spoke to my editor, and they interviewed me. Uh, statements from me. They said they were going to uh, contact me. They have to get, uh, in fact, after that interview, some of them have been calling you know, to clarify one, two, or three. That's it. But then we've also been said, I think you know that already. Um, yeah. Uh, let's let's not talk about it. Let's not talk yeah. about it. The, yeah. the, the private uh, mining company has taken up a suit against Erastos Multimedia and has uh, secured an injunction on their blind side ex parte for 10 days, uh, preventing the airing of the footage. As you can see, we are not showing any footage. We are talking about what went on. We are not showing any footage because it has been injuncted. But Unfortunately, I don't know what to use that injunction is because the footage had already been uploaded long ago before the injunction came. Uh, so that's, that will be all about it. Uh, Erastus, there cannot be an alternative to bold, independent and fearless journalism. We know you are risking your life, even as you identify some of the people involved, but that is what we have to do for this country. Thank you very much. Thank you, Samson. Right. Okay. So, um, I said I would speak to Clara before I came to you guys, but let me start with you, uh, Dominica Yena. Yes. How does this come to you? The military uh, high command issues a statement, and they say that uh, the Ghana Armed Forces has in recent days taken notice of media reports alleging that some of its personnel have been involved in providing security for illegal mining operations. Uh, they take such allegations seriously and they don't condone wrongdoing if true. Accordingly, a full-scale uh, investigation has commenced into the allegations and appropriate sanctions will be handed out to any persons, person or persons found culp culpable. They assure the general public of their unflinching commitment to the national course. Signed, E. Agrikwashi, Colonel, Director of Public Relations. <laughs> uh, something, this is, uh, I, I watched the, the recent the reportage by Erasmus. Mm. Uh, it's, it's, it's on Eras, YouTube. Eras, yeah, Era, uh, Erastus. Erastus, mm. as I don't go. And I must commend him very highly for his bravery um, and the risk that he took, you know, in the public interest. Uh, what surprises me about this is that this was a task force um, of the Ministry of Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation, which means that the government itself was 
monitoring and seeking to enforce you know, compliance with uh, the ban on Galamsey mm. and illegal mining. And uh, as uh, Erastos was just, I mean, a, a journalist, you know, on that task force um, that was uh, monitoring the activities of illegal miners in the, in, the for, in, the, in the forest. So I would have thought that the minister in charge of that ministry would have taken a strong position on what transpired. Okay, it must be a multi-agency mm. approach. Because he was invited he as was, a media house yes. to join them. To join them. Yeah. All right. So, yes, there can be, because of the role of the soldiers, there can be an investigation by the Ghana military. Because, obviously, from everything that happened, the soldiers were there to protect the conduct of an illegal activity. Because from what you yourself have said, I don't know whether you have verified it, um, the mining company does not have the requisite license. I don't know whether it is a, a prospector's license they don't have or a mining, I mean, an actual mining. Yeah, what we are told is that it's a prospecting license they have. Okay. Yeah. Now, so mm -hmm. prospecting licenses under the Minerals and Mining Act allow you to conduct very limited activity to determine the prospectivity of a mining site. All right? You are not supposed to undertake actual mining. But from the footage that I saw, this went beyond just prospecting for gold to determine the prospectivity of the area. So I believe that criminality has occurred. The ministry should take a very strong stance on this, on this matter. And maybe a ministerial you know, uh, committee can be set up to investigate the matter so that uh, you know, the requisite sanctions are imposed. Rather than the military investigating it, the, it officers. The officers also need to be investigated and properly sanctioned. Okay, but as I said, we need to take you know, a multi-agency approach to this matter. And, and, and also... Dr. It, Dr. Ine, to have as many as 30 military men at one site will not be a decision by a gang of, you know, army officers. I, I, do, I do agree with you. Mm -hmm. I do agree with you. I, I believe that this was, uh, you know, done, you know, with the... Um, what do you call it? Uh, official blessings. Uh, yeah, the blessings of uh, people higher up and so on. Because I cannot see how the, you know, the military command structure would not know that they have 30 men stationed in the forest you know, and protecting you know, the conduct of mining activity by a private company. But the worrying aspect of it, something is that there is a, I mean, a, a growing trend of Chinese miners coming into this country, using our local people as fronts, you know, incorporating companies and conducting mining in the name of providing mine support services, all right? And then, you know, sharing the profits with, uh, you know, the local men. But the, uh, the, the manner in which it is being done does not um, augur well for purposes of, first of all, environmental regulation, okay? the you know payment of royalties the payment of taxes and so on so at the end of the day it is this country that is going to lose mm. because these you know chinese people who come in when they extract the gold okay they take it out through illegal routes mm. yeah, um, um uh so uh clara i have the benefit of knowing that the military actually sometimes is able to get into private contracts with mining companies or concessions, and then they will provide military men to go and do uh, offer guard, you know, protection duties. I think the question that is arising is: Should we, the citizens, be funding a critical installation like the army? to be doing this job by private contracts? Um, Samson, the issue when it comes to uh, our many issues with mining, I often don't even know where to start mm -hmm. because sometimes I, it looks like the way we even identify the problem or diagnose the problem itself is pro problematic. Of course, it's, it's I mean. It's, di it's difficult to appreciate how any private person can enter into private contract with our military. 
for private services from the military. And once, whilst this goes on, the military has a hierarchy, it has leadership. What is happening? Who is responsible for, 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 for the military and who is responsible for those um, um, providing the services? And what is, happen what, is, what is the person doing about that? Mm. One of the issues, yes, we, we are often quick to say the Chinese um, are doing this, the Chinese are doing that. The, but the truth is, this is not a Chinese problem. It's a Ghanaian problem. Mm. I think we have to start acknowledging that it is not a Chinese problem. It is a Ghanaian problem. And if we, we, we admit that it is a Ghanaian problem, let's acknowledge what the problem is. What is happening in the mining in industry? I always get, find it quite disappointing when I hear the word task force being used in, in respect of dealing with problems arising from the mining sector. And why do I say this? It's because mining is a regulated activity. It's not like any other business activity in the country. This is a regulated sector. So you have various institutions um, set up to deal with the regulation and make sure that the proper thing is done uh, um, at, at the mining side. Over the years, what, what have these institutions been doing? So we, if there are problems with respect to regulation, two things. We are either looking at where the problem is coming from. Is it a, a legislative problem? Is it an enforcement problem? Or it is both? Yes, mining is about economics, but the economics is governed by law and enforcement. So what is the problem that, and what is required to solve the problem that we have not been doing? I think this, the, the long-term solution to this is to work through the regulators, through the particular institutions and see whose job is to do what, and is the person doing the job or not? As for the military, I don't, I don't even have the words to, to say when I hear that we have soldiers um, providing services to um, um, companies in terms of mining. I am not sure that those soldiers are, for example, equipped with the technical expertise to determine the content of a company's license, what they are supposed to do, what they are not supposed to do, are their activities legal, are they not legal, what aspects of their activities are legal or not. But then again, soldiers, these are soldiers, are, these soldiers are not just um, like people who incorporate a business that you can go and engage. This mm. is a, nat a national institution. So it's properly structured. Mm. The only solution to that is looking at the structure. Whose job is to, 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 to enforce and make sure that soldiers do what they are supposed to do or those, that soldiers don't get involved in certain um, um, civilian um, activities. So it's... Uh, yeah, I, the, I, I, I'm, I'm feeling. I really I don't really want to talk about this. Yeah, the, so, 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 I think so we've the, been talking, talking, and so really the, not doing so, much. It looks as if so. The Ghana Armed Forces says it has commenced investigations into this. That that should be sufficient, isn't it? Because they say they will not condone uh, wrong. Well, it, I, I don't know if it is sufficient to say we have commenced investigations. I thought this should be quicker given that uh, the, the, the military is a, a, a very structured institution. I don't think we need a lot of, I don't think if we really want to get to the bottom of the issue, we wouldn't be able to, yes, we would need investigations, but this, I don't think this is one of the things we probably need to sit and then have certain long processes, a, a, a committee here and a committee there, and then probably after a long while, we, we don't get to hear anything. But yeah. Largely as a country, I think we have to have a, an, an honest conversation with ourselves. What do we want to do with our mining sector? I think we should be honest enough with ourselves as to exactly what we want to do mm. so that we can find a way forward and stop destroying ourselves. All right. Uh, our Samuel Abujinapo, the minister designate for lands and natural resources, suggests that uh, this is an area where he's being commanded by the president to pay attention to if Parliament confirms him. Let's see how it goes. But you see, uh, Dr. Koboy, when it comes to issues like this, I don't want anybody to tell me you are supposed to be impartial. Just ask the questions and go away. <laughs> I am involved. My children are involved. Listen, the, the Ghana Water Company and this state has told us that in five, 10 years, we are going to import water I don't want my kids to import water if this does not stop. And our environment, virgin forest, is being raped in such a manner the president actually put his presidency on the line. So when you hear Erasto say 
that this particular entity had been flushed out in the earlier operation. What, what does it say to you? It's absolutely clear that the president still holds dear the fight against um, unsafe um, illegal mining. And when you listen to him, the last time, I think our caucus had the opportunity to meet the president. And he said that, look, yes, there are, there are folks who voted against some of our MPs because they feel that we have come too hard at them when it comes to unsafe mining. But what the president said was that once the, his objective is noble and his intentions are right, he's not going to back down on this fight against unsafe illegal mining just because it's, go, it's costed at some seats or it's make, it can make him unpopular with some people. So really, if you get close to him, this, this is a, a leader who believes strongly, like you're saying, that we can't allow our water bodies to be destroyed. We can't allow our forests to be destroyed. The quality of air we breathe depends on the vegetation we have and all that. But something, because we use human infrastructure to deal with problems, and uh, like your friend from CDD said, there are people who are susceptible to influence. It's, it's a fact that al along this fight, we've had very noble people who are coming, patriots who are fighting for the nation. Also, we've had people who have lent themselves to, how do you call it, um, influence and all that. So I don't discount or throw away uh, comments that suggest that someone along the chain might be frustrating the efforts of uh, the leader, I mean the president. Of course, his thoughts and his um, uh, motives are what most of us also hold on to. Mm. So I think bottom line, that commitment is still there. And we have to find ways to expose those who is, make those objectives. Anybody, yeah. anybody demanding some accountability yeah. and explanation <laughs> from the military high yeah. command. I mean, the president, yeah. the president yeah. is the commander in chief. Yeah, yeah. Now, it clearly, yeah. on, on the face of it, yeah. not possible yeah. that those officers will just get up, pick their <laughs> rifles, and go and sit in a forest yeah. to protect an yeah. entity. That's, you know, so, yeah. so we need to know. Already, uh, speculations are rife. Yeah. Yeah. There are people actually you know, circulating some yeah. uh, writer suggesting yeah. that this was a, a small group, you can call them a contingent, right? Yeah. That was sent there, there are about 35 or so, that was sent there for a day's operation. Uh, it was supposed to be a day's operation. Yeah. Then the, the suggestion is that going for a day operation, a day's operation tend to be months and is going into for a long time. Yes. And they ended up rather protecting yeah. If, uh, you know, this kind of stuff, rather than doing what may, <clears throat> they would have been doing in the interest of the nation. Uh, Samson, you know, I've known you for a long time, so I'm not one of those people who attack your intents or your genuineness when it comes to the issues. But the point is that because uh, multimedia has done this work, the intention might have been noble, and your colleague is involved, uh, you have some interesting <laughs> small bias. Mm. And bias doesn't mean your opinion is wrong. My yeah. bias but, is to the country. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know. Mm. Yeah. So, but the point I want to make is that um, when you are involved, like in your case, and you even are privileged, like you said, to some military stuff, there's the tendency to maybe go ahead of maybe the investigations and have some no, conclusions. On, on, I mean, on the, on the contrary, let me, yeah. let me say this. Uh, sorry for the interruption. Yeah. But yeah. I think that what something is doing here is a continuation of yeah. the journalistic yeah. inquiry. I get it. Okay, so that we can get to the bottom of it. Uh, I mean, if, you know, if, if, if I mean, counsel, I don't have a problem. If yes. you were, let's say, if they were doing a program, so, so, yeah. so put more oh, no, 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 I'm no, asking, yeah, yeah. is the president calling somebody and asking them questions? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Should he be yeah. telling Ghanaians what what went on yeah, there? Yeah. even before yeah. they do what they say is no, an investigation. If, if something product. we're having, let's say, there was a documentary on the work that has been done, mm. he's speaking to what he knows and all that, that is okay. But because we are on this platform mm -hmm. where he's moderating, that's why I want to say that I give it to him when he goes that line. But the bottom line is that for someone like me, I would like to look, wait for the facts. Mm. I mean, this is a rendition that has come from our brother. We want the, some 
independent, it can be the military or some other body to tell me that, okay, we weren't into it. But also These note, the, also yeah. note that he was an invitee. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Of the government That's, okay, of the state. It. Okay, I get it. The state had a, One, an environmental sustainability <clears throat> task force. Absolutely. Then they were going to do their work, but they needed media. I, you I, know that all the time they have taken the media I, with I, them. No, yeah. Okay. I take that board. But, yeah, but yeah. Let, let me say that. Let me say that. What I can speak to, I mean, uh, confidently, is that because the president is very serious and passionate about this safe mining thing to protect our environment, I am absolutely sure that definitely he will be making the necessary calls and contacts to appreciate what really happened beyond the investigation that has been called. That I am certain about. Okay. No, All but, right. But I must also mm. say something about uh, the motives of the president. Yeah. Mm. Okay, because, uh, um, yes, he put his presidency on the line, yeah. um, saying that uh, he, you know... He, and he actually lost some seats. Right. Some seats but you see, you didn't lose the seats yeah. only on account of the fact that you were hard on the, the Galam Sayers. Yeah. You also lost seats on account of the fact that How after tired. taking the, 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 recent, the mining sites from yeah. the, Galam Say, the Galam Say operators, all right, um, persons with connections in government yeah. took over those yeah. and started operating them. And, and, not, and, that, and from what I am seeing on social media, it, it appears that people, are, people think that this is one of the sites being operated by kingpins of the government. Let's wait for it. Right? And let's you know, as something that. said, as a commander in chief, yeah. probably the, president, the first person the president should fire is his army commander. That, and, but, and let's remember also uh, that, leader, let's yes, remember also, yes, let's remember it's also that it is time. fair. Yeah to defer to the journalist who actually identifies yeah. Delta Force members, members. within yeah. the, the heavily built people yes. who were part of the army in the... Uh, in that's that what place. I'm saying, that we have mm. to wait for the... the All right. Part, and then okay. we can make definitive statements on them. But it was a little bit propaganda mm. from your end. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so thank you very much. I will return to share some of your messages with you. When we come back, we will spend just some 10 minutes to deal with the ministerial appointment. We're asking question whether the president is doing 85 by compulsion because of the outcome of the elections or genuinely he has learned from the criticism that his government was over super bloated unjustifiably by 126 ministers for a poor country like Ghana. We'll be right back. <laughs>